Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about one of the mindset shifts that you need to make when you're moving away from object-oriented programming and going into data-oriented programming like we do in Unity ECS. Now this mindset shift is actually one of the five mindset shifts that I went over during my live training session called Your OOP Habits Are Crippling Your Game. And this is actually an excerpt from that live training session. Now the live training session is over, but if you still do wanna learn from it, I do have the replay available for purchase using the links in the description below. Again, in that training session, we went over the key differences between object-oriented programming and data-oriented design. And then I show five of the mindset shifts that you need to make when moving away from object-oriented programming and towards data-oriented programming. Again, this is just one of those five mindsets. This one in particular is talking about um, AOS to SOA. So that's array of structs to a structure of arrays. Also, everyone who purchases the replay of the training session will get the same bonuses that all the live attendees got. Um, so you do get the full replay of the training session and the Q&A section afterwards. So it's about an hour and 45 minutes total. And then again, I also do include some practice exercises and some additional resources for learning uh, to help you hone your skills as a data-oriented programmer. So if you are interested in that, again, you can purchase the replay of the training using the links in the description below. Otherwise, enjoy this free excerpt from the training uh, talking about moving from AOS to SOA. All right, so uh, the final mindset shift that we're gonna be going over today is AOS to SOA. <clears throat> so AOS is array of structures. So this is a pretty typical pattern for object-oriented programming, uh, basically where the contents of a single entity are stored contiguously in a collection. So in this example, we have a collection of cars. You'll see that you know we have car one, car two, car three, car four. Each of these cars has a you know, number of specific components associated with them. Um, and you can see in this array that um, things are basically stored um, basically by uh, entity rather than you know, by component, which we'll be talking about later. Um, but you can see basically the way that this memory is stored is you know, if we look at all the position things, um, you know, there's kind of like a big gap in memory between the uh, position of the first car and the position of the second car, and you know, position of the third car and so on. Um, so if we were like, you know, bringing these objects into the cache, like through um, this type of structure, you know, we might end up with uh, cache misses if we're trying to, um, you know, uh, basically modify the position of many car components. So yeah, to kind of contrast that, actually, let me see if there is, okay. Um, so to kind of contrast that, um, you know, we have structure of arrays, SOA. Uh, so this is more optimized for data-oriented design uh, where like data is stored contiguously um, and we can kind of, you know, process relevant data only. So again, this kind of comes back to the point of where unneeded data is not even processed. So, um, you know, earlier I was talking about how when we we're looking at rendering, you know, we basically we just need for like a simple render, um, like a position, a mesh and a texture. So we can basically just grab these first three uh, arrays here. So we kind of have this, like, you know, structure of arrays. We can basically just grab these first three arrays here. We don't need to worry about the health components um, or any other random components that are associated with them. You know, we can just grab those. Um, and then, you know, we can kind of process everything in line. So of course it's really easy to, um, for the CPU to process sequential data kind of in the, in the same manner. Um, so if we're doing, you know, a lot of, um, you know, position modification, um, it's a lot easier for the computer to, you know, do a lot of, um, add operations rather than, you know, doing like an add operation and then, you know, some other type of memory shifting operation. Um, and then moving back to like some add operations. And then, um, so sequential data also, you know, reduces context switching, like I was saying, and it allows the CPU to perform uh, SIMD operations. So SIMD stands for single instruction, multiple data. Um, so this is basically kind of like an optimization that the CPU can make. Um, now, uh, Unity's burst compiler, this is what kind of a lot of it is about is making these SIMD operations. So single instruction, multiple data means, you know, again, kind of going back to the example where if we were uh, adding some values to every position component, um, you know, it's, it, we can actually 
kind of combine those all together into a single instruction uh, in the CPU and basically process you know multiple data together. Um, this kind of goes a little bit more in depth than um, I kind of want to go over in this talk, um, kind of operate optimizing for SIMD. But basically, just think of it as a way to, um, you know, if, if we're performing the same, um, basically, instruction set on similar data, we can kind of group that all together, and the computer can just actually process that kind of one small block of data as um, basically just all together. So again, it's, you know, single instruction, multiple data, um, and that's where a lot of the efficiency from the Burst compiler comes. Um, now, one important thing that I do want to point out um, in this scenario, and when we want to use uh, structure of arrays, um, you know, these, these arrays are parallel. So basically what this means is that, um, you know, there's, there's a couple things that this, a couple benefits that this gives us. So uh, the first one is arrays will always have the same number of elements. So you can see here, um, you know, we have four positions, we have four meshes, we have four textures, four healths. Um, and kind of more importantly, actually, is the data at the same index of each array are implicitly associated with the same entity. Um, so, you know, again, if these were all cars, you know, car one could essentially be um, the uh, component at element zero or index zero of each of these uh, arrays here. So, you know, the position, mesh, texture, HP, these in the first position of the array, these would always be, these would all be associated with the uh, first car. And then moving down, you know, the second car would have the second position, mesh, texture, and health in this array here. Um, so again, that, that kind of um, allows us to keep kind of things in order. All right. Um, so wanted to talk a little bit about how um, SOAs work in Unity ECS. Um, so Unity actually automatically does a lot of this for us. I kind of brought up the... Um, concept of chunks a little bit earlier. Uh, basically, chunks are 16 kilobyte, basically blocks of memory, um, where they basically have, you know, all this data um, for a specific, you know, type of component. So you'll see that, you know, obviously there would, in a real uh, ECS chunk, there would be much more than this. Um, you know, that would not be 16 kilobytes worth of data. Um, but basically, you can see that things are basically broken up into SOA. So, you know, we have all the positions together, followed by all the meshes, followed by all the textures, followed by all the health ones. So, again, these are basically, you know, all the, the like data is all um, blocked together. Um, and one interesting thing about this is the uh, basically when we create a new chunk, all the this memory is pre-allocated for us. So when we want to add a new entity to the um, uh, the chunk here, basically we just need to populate the values. Uh, the data is basically already allocated in memory for us, and we literally just need to copy the data values in here. Um, so you can see, kind of in this example that I have at the bottom, um, you know, basically we have just two uh, entities in this collection. So you know, I've, I've populated in. Uh, the first two positions, the first two meshes, the first two textures, and the first two health values. Um, and then so if we were to go to, um, you know, add another entity in here, we could literally just copy in um, the specific data values over in the third slot of each of these arrays. Um, and then once this fills up and we try to add a new entity, uh, then th that's when the computer will actually go ahead and allocate a new chunk for us. And then we can start populating up that chunk. Um, so yeah, kind of going back to some of the optimizations that we can make, um, we can actually break up uh, large data components into smaller ones. So you know maybe if we had um, kind of like a big like monolithic you know player data component, and that has like you know a bunch of different you know values associated with our player, um, it would probably actually be better to break that up into you know a number of smaller different data components. Um, so there are a couple benefits that you get from that. Um, you know, obviously, uh, you kind of have the SOA benefit where, you know, like data is put together, where if we had like, you know, a big component that had a, a decent amount of data on it, um, and we we're trying to store like a number of ones of those together, um, you know, maybe we don't actually have to access, you know, every single variable on uh, every single 
um, one of those components every time. So then we're kind of, um, you know, like doing like kind of leaps in memory rather than, you know, doing things like very sequentially. Um, and it also does give us kind of that benefit of component reuse so we can, um, you know, maybe use some things on the player, some things on the enemy, some things um, on like a car class so we don't have to like, um, you know, make one-off things for everyone. So that kind of goes back to the whole uh, thing about um, duck typing versus in, uh, explicit typing. Um, and then so you'll, you'll notice a lot of times in uh, Unity ECS, kind of when you structure data components, kind of one of the main patterns that you'll see is um, it'll be basically just be the name of the data component and there's only one variable associated with it and it's usually just called value. Um, so you basically have like name of the component dot value. Um, and so that's kind of like what you wanna stick with. You, I mean, you don't necessarily always have to have just one um, variable associated with one data component, um, but it is um, a little bit cleaner. And most of the times we're just going to be accessing that one value um, off that data component. All right, so once again, that was just a clip from the live training session that I put on last weekend talking about um, your object-oriented programming habits are crippling your game. Again, we're going over some of the mindset shifts that you need to make when you're moving away from object-oriented programming and towards data-oriented design. And so if you're interested in seeing the full replay, you can purchase the replay of it uh, using the links in the description below. Again, you do get all the bonuses that were included for everyone who attended the live training session. Um, so if, again, if you're interested than that you can use the links in the description below otherwise i hope you did enjoy this free excerpt of the training session but i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you in the next one